Toyota needed a car like this for so long and I'm happy that what they've given us is so powerful, so efficient, and so well packaged, all well being easy to use. Good job, Toyota. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 24 Toyota Grand Highlander. We are going to take it for a drive, but first let's take a look at how it looks on the inside and out. For many years now, if you wanted a large Toyota to haul your people and your things, you had two options. You had the big body on frame Toyota Sequoia, or you had to get a minivan with the Sienna. But finally, Toyota has a better option for you if you want more of that crossover lifestyle, the Grand Highlander. Despite sharing a name with its smaller Highlander sibling, the Grand Highlander really could have a whole name of its own. It's got unique styling that looks a little bit more like a Toyota RAV4 here. Are you all seeing that as well? Similar styling in the rear and the front, but a whole lot more space than anything else that Toyota has put out in a crossover setup like this. You can get a whole bunch of suitcases behind the third row. You can get adults in the third row. And we're gonna see all of that right now. Walking up to the tailgate, we're gonna kick it open and start revealing everything the Grand Highlander has to offer you. Look at all this space. A little bit high of a load surface right here. Just keep that in mind if you're a shorter individual, but no lip, so that's good for getting things in and out. This is the top level trim with a hybrid powertrain, so not a ton of room under the floor here, but you can see how easy it is to fold down the rear seats, give yourself even more cargo room there. It's gonna be a lot more than your standard Highlander much more in line with something like a Jeep Grand Cherokee L, maybe a larger Ford Explorer, something like that. Good amount of space, and then you pull these right back up for your passengers. Kick this back down. You do have up to a 5,000 pound tow rating with the Grand Highlander, but we're not seeing a tow hitch on this specific model. What do you all think of the styling? A little bit of RAV4, a little bit of smaller Highlander. I am quite a fan. A few new colors here that Toyota's giving us as well. It's a nice progression of Toyota's design language and I'm digging it. But let's take a look at the inside. Popping open the door, solid door opening sound, and we're greeted with a stylish interior. Bronze accents and some colored cross stitching. Captain's chairs in this model, you can get a bench right here and going along with the bench in the back giving you seating of up to eight. Let's let ourselves into the third row. Nice step here that Toyota has included in the Grand Highlander to make ease into the back row just that much easier. Bringing this seat back at me, Toyota promises that adults can fit back here and I am happy to confirm they are correct. At five foot 10, I've got a little bit of room to tuck my feet up underneath. My knees are elevated a bit, but as you can see here, headroom is okay. I would be okay spending time back here. It's getting a pass. Not only that, but every seat gets a USB-C port, even in the base XLE trim. And you can see plenty of places to put tablets and drinks and juice boxes. They really thought of the family with this Grand Highlander. Two different ways of getting into the second row. I can be civilized and slide that forward, but we all know that kids don't always take that route. So Toyota has made that center console actually removable if you want your kids to be able to get in and out by just stepping through the center. Stepping into the second row now, you can see the captain's chairs have adjustable armrests and the center console that's given me creepy places to put tablets or other things. And with one hand, I can completely remove it. You're greeted with a flat load floor. Slide it back in and there you have it. Other goodies back here include climate control for the rear, heated and cooled seats in this platinum model, more USB-C ports like I was telling you, and a 1500 watt wall style outlet. Very ruggedized floor mats for any of your kids' mistakes. And of course, a good amount of room as well for an adult. Plenty of headroom in the second row. No complaints here for me. Big thumbs up. Shades right here to keep the sun off your loved ones. And ultimately, this is making road trip status including this panoramic sunroof, letting the sun in here. Before we get into the front, let's pop open the hood and take a look at this iForce Max turbocharged 
hybrid powertrain. There are three different engine options for the new Grand Highlander. And this is the biggest one, 362 horsepower and up to 27 miles per gallon combined fuel economy is giving you the best of both worlds. But if you don't wanna spend all of your hard earned cash and get this big boy model, you can also get a standard hybrid powertrain that's gonna get you up to 34 miles per gallon combined, or you can get the base turbocharged motor that's gonna be a little bit peppier, not quite as efficient, but costs just that much less. Into the front, let's do a quick door close sound. Pretty solid. We see auto up and down windows for all four outboard windows there, nice to see. Speakers for our 11 speaker JBL audio system, Grand Highlander kick plates, and more of these ultra suede and bronze seats in this platinum trim. More bronze accents as we get inside. What a nice place to be. Big old 12 inch touchscreen there featuring Toyota's newest infotainment system. The touchscreen also offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support. And something I really like to see, physical climate controls for everything, dual zone climate. And I like how you actually see your little climate readouts on each of the adjustments. That's really nice. Wireless device charging, a place that could probably fit Miles's big bottle. I'm betting that once he gets that car, he'll be able to actually fit his big bottle in there. They definitely hit on water bottle storage in this car. Bunch of drive modes and a pretty innovative center console slider that allows driver and passenger to keep his or her elbows down here and still get into this very large center console area. I like to see that. What do you all think? Is this enough? Does this new Grand Highlander spark your interest? I'm digging the bronze accents and I am really excited to get this thing out on the road. Starting off our drive, you'll notice by the color of my hood that I'm actually in a different Grand Highlander than the one we just looked at from the outside. This is a limited trim, so there's XLE at the bottom, then limited, and then platinum up at the top. We were looking at a platinum, but this limited is pretty well fitted out as well. It starts at about $55,000, jumps up to fifty-seven dollars as we're seeing it right here. Just about all of the features that we saw on that previous one, but we don't have the optional camera rear view mirror that you see on the platinum and another feature up here, which we'll talk about once we're out on the road. We are still rocking the iForce Max hybrid powertrain. So let's do a quick turning radius test. Are we gonna make it? Let's check our front camera. Thank you, parking beepers. Pretty decent turning radius. And having that 360 camera really does help especially because if you're a smaller individual or really any sort of individual, this is a large hood that we're dealing with in front of us and being able to have a camera and those parking beepers, I like having both, it helps you to come up to parking spaces or, or stop signs or maybe coming into your garage or something like that before hitting the wall, you can stop yourself, which is very important in a vehicle like this. Quick moment for our world famous horn test. Okay, very authoritative car horn. And what I also noticed, pressing the horn there, is that very isolated. Just wanted to make sure that forerunner was gonna stop there. Very isolated, I've noticed that so far driving the Grand Highlander around, that they absolutely aced it with sound deadening in here. There's active sound control, there's a lot of isolation. In fact, do we have, yep, dual pane glass on the front windows here. This is a really serene place to be, which we'll see once we make it out of some traffic here. But while we are in traffic, it's a good opportunity to show you how we are currently running in hybrid only mode. We've got a little power indicator up there up front, but I'm also gonna bring it up on the screen. Energy flow, you can see as I let my foot off the brake, power is flowing from the battery to the electric motor powering both of our axles. We actually have an electric motor up front and an electric motor powering the rear. So this is an all wheel drive setup and the rear axle, the two rear wheels back there, are powered exclusively by electricity, and then the engine can power the front wheels. If you don't opt for this iForce Max 
hybridized turbocharged powertrain. It's giving you 326 horsepower, about a combined 400 pound-feet of torque. Toyota doesn't always publish their torque figures. If you don't opt for that big engine, you have two other options. Your base XLE cars are going to start off with a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four engine. This is gonna be pretty similar to the one we see in the standard Highlander. That one's given you about 240 horsepower or so, and we haven't driven it yet. Can't really report on it, but it should be moderately competent at pulling this just under 5,000 pound vehicle around. Not quite as efficient though as the two hybridized options. The, the middle tier is what you're gonna to wanna to get if you really wanna save money at the pump. That is a 2.5 liter, four cylinder again, hybrid powertrain, no turbo. So it's going to be a good bit more efficient. Toyota promises up to 36 miles per gallon in the city, according to EPA testing, and 34 MPG combined. Now those are some really impressive numbers for a vehicle that can hold up to eight people and a good amount of things and even in that hybrid powertrain still tow up to 3,500 pounds. I'm really having a tough time thinking of any other vehicles on the market that are gonna give you those sort of efficiency numbers on 87 octane without having to plug into the wall or anything like that. You simply get in, fill it up with regular fuel, hit the road, and get some really impressive fuel economy numbers. And I just love that, I really do. So many people get caught up in all these crazy new technologies in order to save a buck, but sometimes there's just a, a beautifulness in the simplicity of a well-built and engineered hybrid powertrain motivating the vehicle around. And I hope we get a chance to drive that around. They only have one of them at this event. It's really tough to get into. But if you want the best Grand Highlander that Toyota has to offer, this is the powertrain you want. The iForce Max, as they're calling it, 2.4 liter hybrid turbo powertrain. And what's great about it is they actually paired it up with a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, some of you who are a little bit more car nerd enthusiast focused, you might be thinking, ah, six speeds, six gears, who's doing six speeds anymore? They're all putting in eight, nine, 10 speeds, CVT, something more intense, dual clutch transmissions, anything. But this is why I think the six speed was the right transmission to go with for this powertrain. I'm going uphill here, about 45 miles per hour. If I push down on the throttle a little bit, the engine doesn't have to shift. There's so much torque, and that's your twisting force. That's your low-end grunty power. There's so much power from the engine between the hybrid aspect, the electricity in there, and the turbo that I can accelerate this big, heavy vehicle, even if I had a bunch of people in the back, well up to speed, and the engine doesn't have to try too hard. You don't hear a lot of shifting because it doesn't have to pinpoint exactly what's the best gear to be in. If I put my foot down, oh, it really pulls. Oh my goodness. We're talking 6.3 seconds, zero to 60, estimated by Toyota. You all have to realize how crazy that number is, that just a big seven or eight passenger family hauler like this is getting zero to 60 numbers that a, a sport compact was getting just not too long ago. I mean, this thing is pulling the steering wheel away from my hands. It's that powerful, but it sounds good doing it. It's not like one of those Toyota engines or powertrains that's really grainy and doesn't sound like it wants to rev out. No, this makes a good sound and it's not, it's not a car like a Mazda CX-9 that you really wanna hustle through corners, but the competency and the ease at which that power is there is really, really nice. And on top of all that, because this is a hybrid powertrain, look down there, 24.4 MPG is what this vehicle's been getting, and that's all day here with journalists driving it in and out and hard and uphill and downhill, doing things like this. It's still getting 24 miles per gallon. That is impressive. And of course, if you do want to drive sporty, you have a sport drive mode. Press that. Get a little bit of extra fake noise pumped in through the speakers. And in theory, the powertrain is a little bit snappier. It's gonna give you a little bit of extra power sooner. You do even have paddle shifters. You can shift down into manual mode and tell the car what gear you wanna be in. It's kind of fun or maybe you're towing or something like that you want to be able to 
keep the transmission from going into a certain gear, going up, up shifting or something like that. It's nice to have. On top of sport, you got eco, normal, mud and sand, rock and dirt, and snow drive modes. All of that is to say that Toyota has engineered the Grand Highlander to tweak the all-wheel drive system and the powertrain just so to be just that much better for all those different situations that people find themselves in in a large adventure style vehicle such as this. Some other features that I really appreciate in the Grand Highlander, it's hardly even a feature I'll say, but it's the fact that we have physical climate controls right here. Riding around and driving around in this car throughout the day, I felt like Toyota has almost taken a positive step backward from the modernization that we see in so many cars these days. So many brands seem like they're just throwing in technology for technology's sake, if you will. Making haptic buttons and climate controls that are buried away in screens or split the, the, the responsibilities of the buttons with other controls. Not so in the Grand Highlander. You have all of your climate controls here. Heated and cooled seats, the dual zone rotators, the fan control, all of that in a very easy to grab place for both the driver and passenger. I appreciate that. This car is about putting an ease and a simplicity into your daily driving, whether you got kids in the back, whether you're pulling pets around or gear or a trailer, the Grand Highlander is gonna do its best to make that all easier for you. I'm pretty happy with how they've done that. Another really cool feature that we're not seeing in this limited trim, but we've seen in the Platinum model, is an actual eye scanner right here. And if you opt into it, it is optional, but you can actually pair up your face, your face here, your scan, to the infotainment. So say you share this vehicle with a spouse or with a child or somebody else in your household, if they set their face up to their infotainment settings, then when they get in the car, the seat will adjust for them, the radio presets, the climate controls, all of that will curate right to their profile right when they get in the car. And then when you get back in, it scans your face, brings you back to your settings. That's such a cool feature. Oh my. Getting to throw it around a corner here. While I'm not being blown away by the driving dynamics, what that corner actually showed me is the seat has a nice, squishy, but yet supportive bolstering. Something that I would be remiss to not mention here early on in the video is the suite of safety features that comes standard on all of the Toyota Grand Highlanders. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 is working hard to make sure you and your family are safe across the lineup. It's not something they're gonna make you pay extra for. So from things like automatic emergency braking, cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring. That's something that you pay a little bit more for in Toyotas, but people do really appreciate having that peace of mind knowing that Toyota is looking out for you. We've changed interior colors, which also means we've changed powertrains. Underneath here, we have the 2.4 liter, the base motor for this car, and we've also added a passenger. Everybody say hi to the Topher. Hello. I'll throw his link down in the description. He's been out here in Hawaii driving the Grand Highlander with us, but this is the engine that you're going to get if you get a base Grand Highlander. The XLE, the Limited, and the Platinum are all available with this engine. 265 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, which equates to plenty of power. You are hearing it work a little bit harder. Getting up hills, towing, having a fully loaded vehicle, it is going to have to work more in order to get you up to speed, but you're still going to get Toyota reliability and it's still going to do a pretty good job. Fuel economy numbers aren't as impressive as something you get with the hybrid, but if you're mostly just running on the highway, it's actually gonna be getting about the same fuel economy as that iForce Max. My biggest impressions are that it's not quite as smooth and luxurious seeming as the iForce Max. The iForce Max, the bigger hybrid engine that we drove earlier today, that one's able to make shifts and add speed to your car without really having to scream. Even at full acceleration, it's a very quiet and refined and, and confident sound. This 2.4 liter does have to work a little bit more, a little bit more clattery, but certainly not a bad engine. And I would happily take it in the Grand Highlander, especially if I wanted to save a little bit of money. We're also seeing some of those platinum bits that I was telling you about earlier today. So you've got this here, 
for scanning your face, for loading up your settings here, and for driver attention. You can see our camera rear view mirror here. And I'm a fan of this interior. What do you all think? Would you get more of the darker interior, a little bit more mature looking? And do you miss the bronze accents in the iForce Max? Or do you like a little bit of this fake wood grain, a little bit of the brown leather? Let me know in the comments. Let's take this opportunity to talk competition. The large three row crossover segment is huge. There's no getting around that. Every make has got a model in there that they want to try to use to get your money. But what is making the Grand Highlander stand out against some of the leaders like the Kia Telluride? I'm a big fan of the Telluride, but that's gonna be smaller than this car. The space isn't quite as well optimized as the Toyota Grand Highlander here. You're not getting the variation in powertrains either. No hybrid option from Kia or its corporate cousin Hyundai when it comes to their larger crossover options. You can get it in the smaller ones, but not the big ones. For me, that's, that's a big reason to go for the Toyota is the fact that you can have all this grunt, all this refinement, and still get some pretty darn impressive fuel economy numbers. Good luck getting anything over 25 in mixed driving with something like the Kia Telluride. I will say the Telluride's a bit more exciting inside. You can get some more fun colors to the interior. You can get a nice brown on the Toyotas here, but I like the materials in the Telluride. I like the way everything works, but I think there's more forward-facing technology in the Grand Highlander here, and definitely a strong argument to go this way. The other one that jumps out to me is the new Mazda CX-90. We drove that recently, and there's a lot to love about that car. I think the CX-90 looks better, and I think the interior is more luxurious and has more to offer from a luxury standpoint. Even though it's not quite a luxury car, the way it looks and feels is really pushing that direction. The Grand Highlander still has a Toyota presence. There are hard plastics around. You can't get around that even coming up here close to $60,000. I like the way it looks with these bronze accents and this iForce Max, but the Mazda CX-90 feels like a nicer place to be. However, you're dealing with a lot of new and not necessarily proven technology in that CX-90. You got the plug-in hybrid aspect, so if you do wanna be getting those great fuel economy numbers, you're gonna to need to be plugging it in and assisting it along that way. You've got a new transmission from Mazda. Some people don't like the way the infotainment is way far away, you gotta use the rotary knob. The Mazda is definitely right for certain people if you're going for that stylish, chic sort of vibe. The Mazda CX-90 might be the way for you to go, but if you want something you can buy, live with for 10 years, problem-free, and keep a really high resale value, Grand Highlander is gonna be a better bet for you. For some of you, the most important aspect of a vehicle in this class is the amount of space in the rear for third row passengers and stuff. So you might even be looking at a full size body on frame, something like a Chevrolet Suburban or a Ford Expedition. The problem is, is those are going to ride a lot rougher than something like this. It's more of a truck feel and driving experience and there's no way, again, you're gonna be getting anywhere close to the fuel economy that you can get with any of these Toyotas. Even if you get one of the non-hybrid versions, the Grand Highlander is going to be a more efficient car to drive around and it's gonna be easier. The steering is light, the greenhouse is good, a lot of visibility in here. Yes, there are benefits to going with a full-size vehicle like that. You're gonna have a higher towing capacity and a little bit more space, but for a lot of people, they're going to enjoy driving something like this around more on day-to-day -day errands than something like a big vehicle like a Tahoe Suburban or an Expedition. Okay, here we go. Sport mode, full throttle. Yeah, grunty. Grunty and so quick for something like this. Wow. We would have needed a car like this for so long and I'm happy that what they've given us is so powerful, so efficient, and so well packaged, all well being easy to use. Good job, Toyota. But what do you all think? Are you willing to pay a little bit more for maybe a little bit less feature content, but the precision and the quality and the execution and reliability that you get from this new Toyota Grand Highlander? Let me know in the comments. And thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.